Hey guys, it's Aiden here and welcome back to another episode of well, the vlog. Well, this is going to be a two-part series, so as I'm recording this, it's right now November, but I filmed this back in August after the end of my 1B term. So I, when I went back home to Hong Kong, it was so great to go back. So this first part you're going to see here is me traveling back home, so like through Toronto, stop over in San Francisco. This is a bit of a travel vlog for United, so like you get to see my thoughts on United and this flight experience as a whole. Second part will be some footage from back from Hong Kong and the process of coming back and a little stopover in San Francisco had a little bit of fun there. So I do hope you guys enjoy this and let's get going with the vlog now. By the way, I finished my final economics exam 18 hours before all of this filming happened and you can see the resident in the text, it's 3 a.m. So first stop, Toronto Pearson Airport and then first I gotta go through TSA pre-clearance because I also have a Canadian passport. So be sure you follow me along on this journey. Overall, that experience, I would say, was fine. It was rather slow and not the most efficient, I'll say that's for sure. I mean, of course, they asked me questions, nothing more than expected. I mean, I'd say so far, smooth so far, just not the most efficient, but what can I really expect in here? Now, I do have Plaza Premium Lounge access, but they don't, the lounges here don't open until 5.30, and I board at 5.50, so honestly, what's the point? I'm flying on a 737-800 today, so that's going to be interesting. So I guess I'll see you guys at the Yeah, so as you can see, the boarding process is overall very smooth, and United splits it into different groups for boarding, which makes sense. This is a 737-800, so now I sit in one of the premium economy seats, because the, the price was actually pretty good, you know? You can't expect anything too crazy from your seats, 737 economy, but that was actually much more spacious than I thought, and that's what really surprised me. I haven't flown on a 737 in forever. The fact that I could stretch my leg in the seat was already a very good sign. So now you're here around the pushback here. Here and god I love plane spotting so much sometimes. Yeah, so shortly after takeoff, there was a really good view. We were cruising at around 35,000 feet, if I remember correctly. Uh, the view was very nice, and we were served a little bit of a snacks here. So nothing too special, you know, bit of peanuts. I got myself a tomato juice personally because I always get that on planes for some reason. TV show options were pretty limited because they were preset TV channels, so kind of like satellite TV in a way. So you can't really select other things. No movie options, but again, 7:30 serve and IFE in flight entertainment. I can't really expect that much, but overall, it was a comfortable flight. I would say it was mid overall in terms of like the experience itself, but the seat was comfy. Yeah, in flight team team was a little bit of a letdown, but I can't expect too much. But the best part was definitely the views, as you can see from the photos here, seeing the Rocky Mountains and whatnot. So now we're slowly going into the approach here on San Francisco, and this approach from the bay is always one of my favorites. So we were landing to a right here. San Francisco. So, turns out I didn't actually need to go out through security because I already because uh, since I have a Canadian passport, so I already did the Pearson USA pre-check there. 
I didn't have to do it again here. And, and it turns out the suitcases are transferred straight to the plane and I don't have to collect it at the baggage claim like other people told me to. So I got, I, uh, so I, I wasted a little bit of time there, but not a big deal. Now my plan is, I would say I'm gonna go to see the observation decks first, then I'm gonna grab some food. Now my gate is International Terminal G. I just need to figure out my way around here, but I think the observation deck is, I think it's in Seagates? I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to investigate it around. So far from impressions, I like the here more than the Toronto Pearson Airport. Just more variety of options. It's much bigger in comparison. And I would say, yeah. Okay, apparently observation decks at Terminal 3, so that should be international size. So that's gonna be gates, the G gate. So I just walk it right now. Then after that, I'm gonna head to a place called Yankees Pier. I might, might as well try it out. My friends told me to have it to try it out. And I guess I will a while, while I have the time to. So I'll see you there. Here we are. Mm -hmm. I, found, I found the location. It's actually pretty nice. You can see, you get a wide view of everything, and look what's coming in behind as well. Though not this one. Can I get it in view? Yeah. So it's a Singapore Airlines A350, 350, This is a good day, I must say that. And now, time for a quick stop at Yankee Pier for dinner. Clam chowder I've ever had. Damn, the clam chowder was pretty good. The good thing that. Okay, San Francisco West Coast, you know, it's next to the, o the ocean, so seafood, I have no, I have no, vert I have no complaints really. So now my plan is I'm just going to explore around the air airport. I'm going to head over to C, A and B gates and C, D, E and F, then head back to International, just chill and wait. This is going to be a long walk, but earning some energy for it. So this is on zero 01 right and zero 01 left. Oh, that's American Airlines just rotated. And then you can also see two aircraft on final yeah. and lining on two eight right, it seems. Yeah, uh, looks like a uh, 737 and another one on long, uh, not long final, but that one right there coming in. So for plane spotting, this place is just awesome. And you have a lot of aircraft here as well. Look how nice this is. I'm pretretty sure I saw Embraer 175 from Alaska and Air just over there. And here you see a parallel takeoff by two planes, zero on left, zero on right. That's the best thing about San Francisco Airport, it's the plane spotting opportunities you can get here. But without further ado, we're now at a boarding gate waiting to board this flight back to Hong Kong. So here we are in United Premium Economy now. It's actually quite spacious and it was better than I expected overall. So when I first got on, we got greeted by this goodies and mentities bag. So from an immediate first impressions perspective, pretty good so far. Best thing is we were parked right next to a 747. And they give you a pair of supposedly passive noise cancelling headphones there. I didn't use them, I used my own. And you can see in this amenities bag, it comes with things like socks, you know, a, a face mask for sleeping, toothpaste, toothbrush, so some stuff to keep you comfortable for the flight. And it was overall decent quality, so it was better than I expected because I expected it to be very flimsy. So pretty useful if you ask me. And just as I would expect from Premium Economy, it even has a little footrest until so you just push it down in the seat in front of you and it just fits pretty comfortably. The remote to control the in-flight entertainment was pretty adequate, but it was actually pretty hard to get out though. So as you can see, I'm tugging it here. The buttons for controlling the reclining and the footrest itself was pretty flimsy and it was, you need a lot of pressure to apply onto it. But then as for leaning a chair back, it was actually pretty easy and smooth. And as you can see, when you fold up the armrest, you get charger type A type C, and that's also where you plug in the headphones. Then on the left side, you can pull out the left side armrest, and that is where the dining table pops up. The mechanism, pretty smooth, and the area of far as this dining desk, or whatever you want to call it, was actually pretty good. If they fold out, there's a lot of area for you to work with. You have a laptop, for example, and the plates they give you are actually pretty big. I found the in-flight entertainment music options to be mediocre, only podcasts, no selections, TV shows were pretty reasonable, I even had house, it makes me happy. Being able to listen to ATC audio is pretty awesome, although it doesn't work most of the time from what I was testing it on the plane.
because not every day you get to see a view like this with a parallel takeoff from your window, which is great. I spent so much time doing plane spotting in San Francisco, it's actually crazy. And I actually picked the seat for a very reason when I was doing check-in online. I wanted to make sure I could get views like these because I knew what the takeoff front moves would be, which is a good benefit with San Francisco having a very consistent airport operation system. So now we're lining up for takeoff. Honestly, I spent most of the flight just grinding movies for most of the time, and then when food came, I was actually pleasantly surprised. It tasted decent. It's better than what I normally expect from economy food, especially when from something like United. So the long haul flight, food wise, not too bad. The salad was surprisingly tasty and somewhat fresh actually, which surprised me. Then I just went to brush my teeth. Honestly, I'm feeling pretty good so far, I would say. Pretty good. I'll explain the best thing when I land and when I get home, and I'll do a quick And then 13 and a half hours later, we were starting our descent into Hong Kong. The descent into the runway in the 2-5 direction always gets you the excellent views, and that's also why I pick seats on the left, to so make sure I can get these views. Nowadays, because of my program, I really don't get much time to be home, so I only get these 2-3 to three weeks to spend at home, which is really important to me because I really do miss my friends and family. But yeah, for the long haul part of this journey, I was pleasantly pleased with this premium economy experience on United, and it was my first time on an American carrier as well, so... After touching down and seeing all those Cathay Pacific aircraft, it feels great to be back home and, and a Hong Kong airport terminal, I will never forget. Thank you. Can't you believe that it's been just over a year since I've been back in my room? It's been, it's crazy. Like when I, cause the last time I was here, I wasn't even 18 yet because I turned 18 in, in October and I was already in Canada during that time. And oh God, that light glare behind is really bad, but yeah, you, you saw that travel vlog, it was pretty interesting. I'm so happy to be back home and be, so I can edit on my, on my rig and my normal setup here. And it's so much better. I finally would be able to, you know, get a flight simulator, play game with friends, connect with friends again. And I haven't been able to properly do that in so long. So I really do, so do want to spend these few, few weeks I have here. I want to cherish that as much as I can, that's for sure. And take advantage of this while I can. I'm going to edit this video of this, obviously. And I hope you guys did enjoy this mini aviation vlog. If you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button down below. And I'll see you in the next video then. See ya.